Now, we want to cover now this particular question um, that's often asked to, to Christians, right? Whether to Christians or to Presbyterians especially. Now, and that question goes like this. Uh, this person asked, now, when God chooses to harden hearts of people or blind people, all right, especially by talking to the Pharisees in parables, then wouldn't it become redundant because by nature they would already be blind to any truth about God, no matter how loudly or truthfully one proclaims to them? Now, I need you to understand the question rightly so that um, you know what he's saying. Basically, this person asked, well, you know, in the Bible, in the Bible, because we say, well, you know, God, God does in the Bible, um, does talk about God hardening the hearts of men, right? God hardening the hearts of men. Now, if you turn with me, to Mark chapter 4. Now, what is this question? And we need to be clear about it because many Christians are very confused about this. Now, Mark chapter 4. Now, let's read from verses 10 to 12. Mark chapter 4, verses 10 to... Well, let's read from verses 9 um, to 12, all right? 9 to 12, reading. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone... They that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. All right, now here, so very often people ask Christians. Now, here is clear that God seems to say, now, so let's see, huh? these are believers, um, unbelievers. All right, unbelievers. Now, and Christ say, now, for the unbeliever, all right, and this is believer. For the unbeliever and the believer. He said, well, look at verse, um, verse 11. Unto you, which are believers, it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of, of God. So know, they will know, all right? But unto them that are without, so unbelievers outside, outside um, the kingdom of God, they are done in parables, all right? Parables, okay? So now, this person asks, well, since we believe that when man is born, men are born sinners, and therefore, we studied on Friday, well, they are dead. Dead. Right? The Bible repeatedly says they are dead. A dead person cannot respond, cannot understand the word of God. We studied on Friday only when the Holy Spirit comes and works in your heart. Then that is called new birth. He regenerates you. Then the Bible says he quickens, he makes you alive. So the Bible says initially we are dead, but the Holy Spirit works in our heart. Then we become alive. And when we become alive, we... The God, the Holy Spirit uses the, the, the Word of God, all right? The Word of God. And from that, we will, we will, because we are alive now, we can understand and we will embrace. And we understood the meaning of understand, right? Understand means you will not just hear and, and know the concept, but you will embrace it. That's the meaning of understand. You will embrace it. So only when a person is, the dead person, the unbeliever, is regenerated, all right? Born again, then he will respond and desire God. As long as you're dead, the word given to you, you understand. You can see, you can hear. You understand the concept. You can repeat the concept to, to back to others, but you will not embrace and agree with God. All right? So we studied that on Friday. So this person asks, and it's often you, you may be confronted, how are you going to answer this? If you believe that men are dead, Men are dead, all right? Men are dead. Then what is the point, all right? The person say, if men are dead and blind and they cannot see, now what is the point of Christ speaking to them in parables? No point. No point. Because they are, they are already blind because they are dead, then there is no need to tell them things in parable. 
Now, the assumption is this, all right? The assumption is God is telling them, well, if you're a believer, I, I will let you know the truth. But you're an unbeliever, I will make sure I use parables to make sure you don't understand, you don't know the truth. Now, young ones, I hope you understand what I'm saying. The question is, if man is dead, blind, why does God say he needs to talk to unbelievers in parables? He don't need to. Because the person said, even he shout, no matter, even he proclaim it very clearly, they will still be blind. You understand? Do you understand the question? No. You must understand, otherwise we can't follow. Caleb, do you understand? All right, I use, you look at hesitant. Now, Caleb, just say you are not a believer, all right? Because the Bible teaches an unbeliever is blind and dead. They won't respond to the word. So you're an unbeliever, right? So they say, Christ said, well, to the unbeliever, I speak in parables. To the believer, I let you know. The person say, if they are blind and dead, then just tell them, tell them straight. Tell them straight. What's the point of using parables to cover the meaning so that they don't see? If you're blind already, I can just tell you directly, but you still won't understand, correct? Now, Wei-Chen, do you understand now? Who do not understand the question? Please put up your hand. Don't be shy. I think most of you still don't. This is a very important question that you will often face, all right? It's been asked many times. God does not need to speak in parables to unbelievers if they are blind. If you believe that unbelievers are blind, remember on Friday we studied, there are, there are a group that believe men is not blind. Men can see, men can understand. But if you teach that men are blind, then no point concealing truth from blind men using parables. Michelle, do you understand? Wow. I, I can't explain the answer if people still don't understand the question. Maggie, do you understand? Somewhat also. The question is this. Because Presbyterians teach that men before the Holy Spirit work in them, we are dead and we are blind, okay? But the Bible says, Christ said to the unbelievers, I speak to them in parables. Because they say, the assumption parables are told to them to hide the truth to hide the truth. So he said, well, if we believe they're blind, then Christ don't need to speak to them in parables. Christ does not need to speak to them in parables if they are blind. Gracia, do you understand? Gracia, you don't understand anything. Do I need to tell you something in a secretive way so that you don't understand if you're blind? I don't need to, right? Jung, do you understand? Okay, last one. Enoch. Do you understand? I won't ask you whether you're paying attention. I assume you are. Enoch, do you understand? No. The person simply asking this, all right? I need to pray in my heart that God make you understand. Presbyterians say that man before salvation is blind. But the Bible tells us Christ spoke to unbelievers using parables. Parables are meant to conceal the truth. So why would God need to conceal the truth if men are blind? So God simply need to tell them the truth. The fact that God used parables, then men must not be blind before they're saved. I hope this becomes better. God does not need to conceal the truth by using parable if man is blind. The fact that God uses parables to conceive, conceal the truth, therefore man is not blind before they are saved. Abigail, do you understand? Yes. I think so. I spent 10 minutes last time then i have to move right first a person say i don't believe in what the presbyterians teach that man is blind before they were saved i don't believe that i don't believe that because christ say i use parables to speak to men so men cannot be blind if men were blind god will not need to use parables the fact that god used parables then you presbyterians are wrong man is not blind before they die before, this week, before they were saved. Clear as mud now? Okay. <laughs> All right. Wait, Maggie, is it clearer now, Maggie? Maggie, if you are blind, do I need to conceal things from you? 
No need, right? So if I conceal things from you, it will as, as the assumption is you're not blind, correct? Okay. So they say, Presbyterians, you are wrong. Man is not blind before they are saved. The fact that Jesus must use parable means that man is not blind. Jonathan. Okay. So I have to explain. All right. So parents, you go back and explain to your children if they're still lost. Now, so they say, based on this parable, that God says, to you believers, I let you know the truth. To the outside, those unbelievers, I use parables. Okay? Now, so they say, this proves best Presbyterians are wrong. Now, how do you explain this? I want to explain this first in explaining to you what are parables. So Christians, whether you understand this or not, you must understand parables. Why does God speak to us in parables? Have you ever asked? Why don't God just say it? Why does he use parables? All right? Young ones, do you know what are parables? All right? Parables are stories that God tells but to teach an important truth. All right? Stories that God tells. Now, let me maybe read um, some um, definitions to you. What are parables? Um, so, young ones, pay attention. Huh? Adults as well. Parables is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. God is not just telling you stories for fun. There's a meaning inside that we're supposed to learn. Now, Jesus very commonly used parables. Now, why? Now, for, for their culture, for their, for their people, it's a common way of, of speaking, especially, especially when you want to make a very strong point to a person. All right? Now, a good example is, remember we just studied about David, he committed adultery and murder, and then Nathan, Nathan went to David, correct? Nathan told a parable. There was a rich man, there was a poor man, and then the rich man had a lot of animals, but he stole the poor man's only beloved um, uh, animal, and he killed it to, to feed the stranger, all right? Now, in their culture, this kind of story will make people, what, all right? So David got very angry, right? But then, then Nathan said, you are that man. Now, parables are used to point out something that, will, that is so common everyday thing to them. And then the point comes across very strong. Understand? Instead of, hey, David, you committed adultery and you committed uh, murder. Right? It's different impact. When David saw exactly what he did was really like this wicked man, wicked rich man. So the point becomes strong. So that is why um, they use parables, illustrations in this sense. All right? Now, so this is a literary form. So children say, what is literary form? This is a genre. As you can say, this is worse than a genre. All right? Now, literary form and genre is... is it's like, children, you know poems, poetry? Poetry, all right? You understand poetry. Poetry are like right, rhymes and like uh, a song, poetry. Now, that's called a genre, a type of literature, a type of writing and speaking, all right? So, literature, uh, genre, a, a kind, a type. So, there's poetry, there are songs, and then there are stories, right? Old Testament, a lot of stories. Like this morning, we read stories. All right, those are called narratives. So, so listen carefully, young ones. Parable is one way of saying things. It can be telling stories. It can be telling stories using earthly things, normal situation in life, and then there's a heavenly meaning, okay? So, so there's a parable. Why does God use parable? Now, let's turn back to Mark chapter 4. God explains. Why does God tell parables and you must learn why and then respond right now look at mark chapter 4 verse 11 now god says unto you the believer is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of god so first parables are to make sure that you believer know what god wants you to know and know it well all right so in other words parables when, it is for, when God speaks a parable, there are believers and unbelievers there, right? For believers, it's for your edification. Young ones, what is edification? To build you up spiritually. Okay? Build you up spiritually. Correct you in a powerful way. But now, look at 
Acts chapter 4, verse 11 again. But what about to the unbelievers that are listening to parables? Now, those that are without outside the kingdom of God, all these things are done in parables. All these things are done in parables. For the unbelievers, it is for their judgment. For unbelievers is to expose their heart and the hardness of their heart. You say, how do I know that? For believers, it's for edification. It's very clear. For unbelievers, it is to expose their heart. Now, because Christ explained, look at verse, verse 12. That seeing they may see, verse 12, and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand. Now, here is what God is saying. For the unbelievers, I tell them parables, because parables, listen carefully, parables are a very strong way to show you a point. Right? We, we say, like, for example, Nathan told a parable. Why? To make a very strong point to David is to create a reaction. And God says, for the unbelievers, seeing they may see, hearing they may not, they may, uh, hearing they may hear and not understand. Now, what does it mean? God did not say, listen carefully. Okay, look up here. The assumption of many people is this. Parables are to hide truths from unbeliever. Parables are to hide truths from unbeliever. Parables are not for that. Please get it clear once and for all in your mind. Parable is not to hide truths from unbelievers. What is it for? Look at, you say that, look at verse 12. Here, seeing, they may see. God did not say they, they cannot see, you know. They will see. But, in verse 12, they will not perceive. All right? Number two, hearing, they may hear, but they will not understand. God says this, they will see. They will hear. God did not intend to hide. Please know that. These things are done in parables to them. God is saying, I'm choosing the genre. I'm choosing the method that is the strongest method to make man see and hear. Now, remember we started on Friday. We said, man is blind. Man is blind doesn't mean they, they look at the English words. Oh, I cannot understand English words. Uh, they, they, then they look at oh, this statement, uh, I, I cannot, I hear and I see, but I cannot. I, you keep telling me Jesus died for my sin. Oh, Jesus died for my sin. I, I, ca I cannot understand that. They understand that Jesus was on the cross and he died for men and he died for man's sin. So man can see, man can understand. So blind does not mean that they don't understand what you're saying. It's a totally mystery uh, you're speaking gibberish to me and I can't even picture it together. They can even explain the gospel as, exactly as you explain to them. They can see, they can hear. Now, what is dead? What is dead? They, cannot, they will not perceive, they will not understand. God is saying, I will use the strongest form of telling them things, parables, to see you cannot run away from seeing this fact. You cannot run away from hearing this fact. You cannot. Because parables are very strong ways. I'm not hiding from them. In fact, I'm choosing things to make them see and them hear. But this is the part. They will not perceive. They will not understand. Now, now the question is this. What is perceive and understand? Now, this is the part uh, when, you're, when people ask you, then you feel very lost. You say, oh, I don't know how to explain that. Maybe you have worries about your own faith. Now, look at verse 12. Um, seeing that and not understand. Now, lest, and, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. Now, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. Now, how do you read this? Okay, maybe I'll ask you now. Um, ask Maggie. Right? Maggie, day. Maggie, when you hear this, oh, is it seeing they hear, uh, they won't perceive, and hearing they will not understand, lest, they, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven. 
What do you seem to understand from this? All right, okay. Well, if they get saved, they'll be able to understand. Now, maybe I'll ask another one. Maybe I'll ask the older one. Um, Benedict, what do you understand from that? All right, your, your other Christian friends or some people say, you know, they ask you this. Hey, your God is very wicked, you know. Your God says things in a way so that they cannot understand. If they can understand, they can get converted. What do you understand it to be? Say again. Can't hear you. Huh? It's simply what you what you understand what is what God is saying. Mm, okay. Now, most people now pay attention to this. Most people read this as, well, God is telling them parables. God is using parables, all right, to make sure that they don't understand, to make sure that they cannot see, so that they don't get converted. I want to say this again. Most people read this as God speaks in parables to them so that they cannot understand. If they understand, they can get saved. Now, so most people read this and say, well, the Christian God is a wicked God. He made sure that he used parables lest they understand, lest they get converted. If I don't use parables, what happens if they understand and they get converted? Do you understand, Thomas? So you say, oh, the Christian religion is horrible. God uses parables or the Presbyterian teaching is God uses parables to hide the meaning so that people cannot get saved. And only those that God wants to save, God will let them understand. Michelle, do you understand? Okay, I understand. <laughs> right, right. right, I make sure that certain... Now, Natasha, do you understand? No. A little bit. What if your Christian friends say, hey, look, I read in your Bible, huh? I read in your Bible, God speaks in parables, to prevent people from understanding lest they get converted. Your God speak in parables so that people don't get saved. John, you understand? Okay, so go back and explain to your children. Huh? Now, is it true? Is it true that God is speaking in parables in order that they don't understand and they don't get saved? Lest they get converted. Oh no, if they understand, they get converted. Make sure I use mysterious parables to talk to them. Okay? All right? Now, is it true? Because this person said, well, you know, if, if we are blind, then God don't need to use these kind of things. Now, listen carefully. Is it that God, God used parables to blind men? No. Rachel, why do you say no? You don't agree with the English? No? Why? Why do you say no? Because men don't want to believe. Ah, yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah. Okay. Now, I turn you to the parallel passage in scriptures. All right? So, this is the parable told, right? Now, I turn you to Matthew. Matthew. All right? Um, Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. So, keep a bookmark if you want. Matthew chapter 13. Now, look at Matthew chapter 13. This is the same incident. One recorded by Matthew, one recorded by Mark. All right? Both recording the identical um, event. Now, Matthew chapter 13. Can we read together verses um, 15? All right? Verse, uh, verse 15. Reading 15. For... These people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted, and I should heal them. Now, Richard, why do you say it is man and not God hiding? It is man that don't want to know. It's not that God made them blind.
Now, how do you know it's, it's, it's man? No, 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 no. Don't, don't give your idea. Look at the Bible and use the Bible to, to justify. Say again, say again. Very good. Now, this is the record of the same event. Look at here. And their eyes, they have closed, lest any time they should see and hear. And, the, and, and here with their ears, and should understand, and with their heart, and should be converted. They have closed. They, the Bible said, they are the one. Christ said, they are the ones that close their eyes. They are the ones that do not want to understand. They are the ones who do not want to accept God. Now look up here. The accusation is this. God used parables to blind people. Speak in mysterious things so that man won't be converted. But scripture tells us, number one, man is the one who refused. You can tell me, you can explain to me. Now, lest they should see with their eyes. What God is saying is this. Men shut their own eyes. Not they like, they close their eyes and read the Bible. Means man refuses. I tell you that there is a God. I tell you that there is hell. I tell you that Jesus Christ is the only living God and, uh, that can save you. I tell you that. Now, when God says they have, their eyes have they closed, mean they say they refuse to see that point. Not that they don't understand what you're saying. I understand the word Jesus Christ. I understand that you're telling me Jesus Christ is God. I understand you're telling me that Jesus Christ came to die for me and without him, I cannot be saved. I understand. But I, I'm not going to accept it. Now, then they say, Less at any time they should see with the eyes and hear with their soul and should understand. Remember, did we study this word understand in Greek? All right? Tsunami. This word understand, it's not just cognitive understanding. It's not just, well, I, I, I cannot understand one plus one is two, you know. No, they understand cognitive things. They understand what you're saying. But this understand means they refuse. They will not understand means they refuse to accept what you're saying. I refuse to accept I hear and I understand you are telling me that I'm a sinner. I hear and I understand that you're telling me that without Christ, I will go to hell. I understand what you're saying, but I refuse to accept that that is true. I refuse to accept it. And, and for some, that I know all these are true even, but I love my sins. I do not want to believe in Jesus because I love my sins. Lest they be converted, I do not want to be converted. Now, I remember that specifically about myself, all right? I grew up in a Roman Catholic family. I believe that there is a real God. I believe there is judgment in hell, all right? Then when a Christian told me the truth, all right? You know, just being doing good works, you can't go to heaven. You must believe in Jesus Christ. You must then, after that, turn away from your sin. Well, in my heart, I know all this is true. I know I'm going to hell. I know that without Jesus Christ alone, I'm going to hell. But I do not want to leave my sins. I chase them away using my dog. Why? Lest I be converted. I do not want to be converted, although I know it's true, because I want to continue in my sins. I don't want to hear this, lest I be converted. So God is saying this, man, when man is blind, it's not because God made them blind. When you read scriptures clearly, their eyes, they, oh, sorry, um, their eyes, they have closed. Now, you come back here. Look up here. Remember I said, what are parables? Parables are the strongest form of speaking to point out the sin of someone, for example, right? In their, in their way of speaking, this is the strongest way. God is saying to the unbelievers, I chose the strongest way to prove to them, but they even though I've chosen the strongest way, they would say, I do not want to perceive this. I do not want to accept this. I do not want it. So, I'm going to ask again. Huh? Um, Caleb, uh, Cornelius, do you understand now? Christ chose, when Christ said, for, for the one outside, I give them parables. When Christ said, for these ones, for unbelievers, I give them parables. Christ is not saying, I give them parables to conceal the truth. Christ is saying, 
I give them parables because it's the strongest way where they cannot argue with me. Gracia, understand? Okay, maybe Gracia, your daddy, when he tells you, Gracia, go pack your room, all right? Versus daddy tell you, Gracia, I want to tell you a story, all right? Then at the end, they say, oh, daddy, I know what you mean, all right? Which one is more impactful? Probably when daddy starts to tell you a story, then after that, so that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me, right? So this is what, so is daddy trying to hide the truth from you? No, daddy is choosing a way that makes you feel the worst, correct? To make you feel the worst. So now, the assumption when people say, Christians, God, your God, and for this person, all right, say Presbyterians, all right, you say that man is blind. Man is blind means, doesn't mean man, man cannot see, man cannot hear, no? Man can. And when God says, this is the blind part. I will blind myself. I refuse to accept God. I refuse. Even I know He's true, I refuse. That is what it means. That's what it means to be blind. And they blind themselves. So when this person does, when God chooses to harden hearts and blind people using parables, is it true? No, it's not true. Because now that is why I explain parables. Because people have this idea that parables are to blind people. No. Parables are to make people who can see, but they choose to be blind and make them exposed as clearly as possible. Okay? Now, so, then they say, well, if they are blind, then God don't need to use parable to hide. No. God said they can see, they can hear. But they refuse. That is why I use parables. All right, so in the first place, the assumption is wrong. The assumption is wrong. Then he says, now the next one, they says, well, now, so now we understand what are parables, okay? Now, now I want to address this in the last five to eight minutes. What's the meaning of blind? What's the meaning of dead? Okay, be very clear. Because many say, well, um, man is blind means they cannot understand anything. They cannot understand the gospel. Now, maybe I'll ask a, uh, Ask someone else, all right? Um, let me see. Uh, teens, 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 Enoch, all right? Uh, Isaac, sorry, Isaac. Now, Isaac, now may I ask adults, sir, do you remember a time where you heard the gospel, you understand the gospel, you know what it means, you know the whole story? Ah, maybe I ask Raymond, <laughs> Raymond, all right, Raymond, you, 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 you be, became saved later on as an adult, correct? Now, Raymond, in the beginning, before you, you say, Lord, okay, I submit to you, you are God, I need to be saved, please save me, I want to follow you. Before that, now, I and other people explain to you the gospel a few times, and even your family members, explain to you, you are a sinner, Jesus Christ died for your sin. Now, let me ask you, all the time when you hear that, did you understand the story and the concept? You understand the concept right? So, please know this. Raymond was not saved yet. But when we say blind, we are not saying someone cannot understand concepts. Someone cannot understand the story. Someone cannot understand the logic of the thing. When we say blind, it does not mean that. Because the Bible clearly says, men are dead, men are blind. But God says, seeing, they see. Hearing, they hear. So, back to Raymond. Raymond saw, Raymond heard. But Raymond would not submit to it for whatever reasons at that point. Right, Raymond? Until a certain point, you know, I have to submit to God, correct? At some point. But all the while, I could hear, I could understand, I could see. That is, that is a different, that's, now listen carefully, that's called cognitive understand, right? Children say, wow, it's cognitive, right? Means you can understand logically, you can, you can um, know the meaning, know the picture, you can. But the, when the Bible says they will not understand, means they will not submit to it. They will not agree with God. I understand the picture. I understand the solution. I understand the gospel. But I don't accept it. That is what it means. All right? So, so just like I say, a university professor can say, yeah, you see, explain the gospel to me. I understand the whole concept. I know the whole concept. But I cannot understand why you believe in it. You tell me that there's a God. I, I can 
understand everything you say to me about God, I hear those words and I can put the picture together. But blind means this. He will say, but I just simply cannot understand why you believe in the existence of a God. Do you use the word understand? Use the word understand, all right? So when the Bible says men are blind, they cannot understand, it means that. They know the picture, but they won't accept it. So please know blind carefully, all right? Now, I give you an example. Now turn to Mark chapter 12, verse 12. Mark chapter 12, verse 12. Now let's read Mark chapter 4, verse 12, together reading. And they sought to lay hold on him, but feared the people, for they knew that he had spoken the parable against them. And they left him and went away. Now here, God says this. These people, they, what, the Bible say, what did the Bible say? They knew, they knew that he had spoken the parable against them. You see, these people know what parables are for. Parables are a very pointed way to show someone a particular thing. Did they say, hey, Christ spoke to us in parable. What is this parable? We don't understand. We, we are, well, we're quite happy about this still. Oh, nice. thanks for telling us a nice story. No, the Bible said they knew that he had spoken against, spoken the parable against them. Parables are used to make them know and they can know that this parable is about you and it's against you the bible said they can understand they saw that but they left him and went away they will not accept it they will not respond to it all right so now so this week i can i need to finish one more thing all right so far we learned a few things Parables for unbelievers is to expose their heart, the hardness of their heart, all right? Expose. For believers is to, for them to, to know truth, okay? Expose their heart. You use the strongest way to expose the heart. The Bible tells us they can know. They know the message. They know what is exposed. They know. But they went away. They refused to respond. All right, so now, number two. Now, what is the meaning of God harden the heart? Because here, it is true that God will use parables to expose the heart, and the heart will be hardened. Now, God spoke about Pharaoh, remember? Pharaoh, Pharaoh's heart was hardened, correct? Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Now, so now I ask you this. So now, now this is a challenge, all right? Maybe I ask adults now. Jonathan, right, Jonathan? If man is already blind and their heart is hard, why is it that God says he hardened the heart? This proves that man's heart is not hardened, you know? How are you going to explain God hardened Pharaoh's heart? God used parables to expose and, and make the heart even more hard? What does it mean, Go, continue to go in the stubborn way. The word continue to go in their stubborn way. Because we always say, right, judicial hardening, judicial hardening. And these people ask, what is judicial hardening? Judicial hardening. What is judicial hardening? This is called judicial hardening. Does God harden people's heart? All right, we have only three minutes to explain this. Does God harden people's heart? Go to Exodus chapter 9. Please quickly, Exodus chapter 9. Exodus chapter 9. Look at verse 12. Exodus ch chapter 9. Now let's read verse 12. Exodus 9 verse 12. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord has spoken unto Moses. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh. So one of the challenge is, what if uh, someone comes to you? All right? Um, if man's heart is hardened already, then why would God need to harden man's heart? You see, we are trying to tell you, no, man's heart is not hardened. Man's heart is alive. Man can understand. 
God, the fact that God says I must harden their heart means in the first place their heart was not hardened. Okay? So Presbyterians, you're wrong. Now, what is the meaning of God hardened Pharaoh's heart? Does God harden a person's heart so that they won't believe and go to hell? We establish no. God does not harden a person's heart to prevent them from believing, to prevent them from getting saved. It's man that does it, correct? We prove that. Now, what is judicial hardening? Now, I don't have time to run through everything. This is the first time in all the miracles that God did in Egypt, the first time when God says, God hardened Pharaoh's heart, the first time. And this is at the sixth, at the sixth um, miracle. So five miracles have passed. Now, I want you to notice what's this sixth miracle. Look at Exodus chapter 9, verse 10. He told Moses, take ashes from the furnace, stand before Pharaoh, sprinkle these ashes into heaven, and then this will break out in boils, all right, upon man. They will break out in boils upon man. Verse 11, and the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils. The sixth miracle was the first time that God would touch humans. All the while, God only put it on, well, livestock and, and, and uh, vegetation. This is the first time that God would touch human to cause pain in humans. First, first miracle among all. Now, and this miracle is so clear. Remember the, the, the magicians keep imitating Moses' miracle? But this one, the Bible says, the magicians cannot imitate. And it is at this sixth miracle that God said, I harden his heart. What does it mean? It means this. When God hardens the heart, it means this. Man's heart has, is already hardened. All right? And God will do things to show you, to expose your heart. But it will come a point where God will do certain things, like now he will touch human. This will become a very strong point to the person. And to show the person, even when I touch you, humans, you feel the pain. Not animals feel the pain, your vegetation feel the pain. You feel the pain, yet you will continue to go in your stubborn ways. So when we say God hardened man's heart, what it means is this. Now, God will choose to do something that is so strong, like tell parables, that is so strong that he will prove to you, expose to you, please don't say, I am the one who hardened your heart. I will do something so painful to you, but you will still continue in your wicked ways. Understand? What is judicial hardening? Man's heart is always hardened. God now will choose to do something so pointed, parables, or very strong thing to show you. You see, even when I do the strongest thing, tell you in the strongest way, you will continue to go in your wicked ways to prove to you, to expose your heart to yourself. Clear as mud. No. Maybe I read to you, all right? Someone says, um, where did I type that? Now, it is not to be understood, God's judicial hardening is not to be understood as God positively creating hardness. God doesn't do that. Men harden their own heart, number one. Number two, he had before, men have before hardened their own hearts. Men have hardened their own hearts. Before miracle one to five, they hardened their own hearts. God was pleased to leave him under the control of his strong illusion. God would say, I will do something even stronger. And so, in order, through these events, to make him more and more obstinate, to show to him, you are very obstinate. I use Matthew. Matthew, daddy says, now don't do this, all right? Then Matthew says, ah, oh, then Matthew continues to do it, all right? Then daddy says, Matthew, now I will cane you, all right? Then after caning, Matthew continues, right? When daddy canes you, and even cane you, and Matthew continues, it shows that Matthew is very, very stubborn, correct? So God Judy hardening is God will cane. God will do something very strong. And he will know that you will continue in your stubbornness to show you. When daddy canes you, is to show you. Matthew, you see, even when I cane you, you continue to be stubborn. Matthew, are you stubborn? Yes. Correct? Understand? Judicial hardening, that is what it means. Everyone is totally lost because hungry. Cornelius, do you understand? 
You have to say understand because you don't go home for lunch. All right, so I'll leave it as this. But next week, next time you come around, I want to answer the question of how to interpret parables. How to interpret parables. Okay, let's turn to God in prayer. What do we have here? Top five reasons why church dropouts. Uh, what church dropouts say. Why they stop attending church. Now, please remember 66% of, well, I take the American view, um, they are the most readily available results. They stop attending church at least a year after turning 18. So from